now to to talk a little bit about uh, revenue growth and and sales mm. growth because you've you've played a big role. You've, you've done a lot of that at multiple or organizations. When you when you kind of transplant yourself or when you enter a new company, whether it's one that you've started or one that you've been brought into or you joined, uh, what are the the levers that you tend to look for that you can pull to increase sales? Like where mm. do you where does your mind typically go? Where does your eye go? Mm. Uh, in terms of priority first things that you would kind of look at as an opportunity to increase sales and revenue? Well, actually, <laughs> hate to say it, proposition. I know I was trying to, we were trying to change, this, change the subject, but, but if you haven't got a clear proposition, a polarizing proposition, then you've got nothing to work with. And what I right. mean by polarizing... As a value, also known like a, as a value proposition, we, we refer to this as yeah, a yeah. message, some consider it a unique selling proposition, many different names, but it's a, a statement... Yeah, yeah. The, okay. I mean, I'll give you a couple of examples. Uh, a, a really, really simple example. Uh, Alpha Century, the creative agency for entrepreneurs. Mm. Okay. Um, which, guess what? Attracts entrepreneurs. Right. Um, uh, another, Impero, um, we make tired brands famous again. If you're not a tired brand, you ain't going to find them. But if you are, boy, yeah. they're on the list, right? Right, right. <laughs> uh, um, uh, clever campaigns created up north. Yeah, talks about sort of the, the northern attitude and so on. Mm. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, I don't know, sophisticated CRO for big commerce. It yeah. talks to the audience and it says, if you're not sophisticated, if you're not big commerce, if you don't want CRO, don't come to us. But, you know... If you do, if you are in that. What one quality that, that mm. stands out among each one of the examples you just shared is focus and specialization, right? You're totally, being yeah. very specific and intentional, calling out mm. who the ideal client is, which for some people, and I would say most people at one point or another, is terrifying because oh, for all of us it is. Right? Yeah. Because yeah. you're saying no to a lot of potential, kind of air quote, potential, uh, yeah. you know, market. How do you counsel, how do you guide the agencies mm -hmm. that you work with to overcome that fear and to embrace with confidence uh, and, and have the, you know, kind of the level mm. of bravery to move forward mm. with that state, with a new statement that does mm. focus, specialize on a very specific, smaller group of the marketplace? Um, there are several different um, aspects to the answer to that. One is... Uh, most, if, if you're an agency or a consultancy, more or less, you can only handle 12 clients. It's as, as you know, and, and if you're AKQA, which started uh, two weeks before I started my first agency, AKQA started, they were much more successful than mine financially. Uh, but they've only got 12 clients. They just happen to be global. And one of them is Microsoft, right? And the other is right. Nike and so on. Um, uh, you can only really manage 12 clients. Well, that means that you can leave on the, you know, on the table the tens of thousands of other clients who you're not going to work with. Now, most people don't want to say, oh, I only do this because they're hoping that Coca-Cola is going to phone them up and say, hey, do you want to be our, you know, on our roster, right? Uh, or that you're going to win Chase Manhattan as a, as a legal account if you're a law firm or whatever. Um, the reality is, Chase isn't going to phone you. Coke is not going to phone you because they've got their, they've got their stuff sorted, right? <laughs> so you might as well specialize. And if you specialize in the stuff that you find joyful, right? Jim Collins uh, uh, in, I think, Good to Great or... or um, but Jim Collins basically described the hedgehog principle, which right. is yeah. the well, concept, which is you have to do stuff that you are good at because if, it's, if you're no good, then right, you're not going to keep your clients. That you have a passion for, because that drives you and, and attracts people, and that is profitable, right? Mm -hmm. And you have to have all three of those things. You have to be good at it and passionate about it, and it has to be profitable in order, in order to drive you uh, your success. And if you're not passionate about it, then why bother doing it? Because yeah. life's too short. And, and I've had, I had six agencies my own, three of which were wildly successful and very famous, and three of which were, well, one of them, the industry it was in, didn't take off interactive TV. 
The other two were abject failures, right? And so I've made every mistake that you can make. Um, I, so I had six companies of my own, and I ran uh, a group of companies, a, a, a virtual merger of uh, 12 companies. And in the last six or seven years, I've helped, I don't know, 30 or 40 companies scale myself, and I've got a bunch of colleagues doing the same thing, and my own business is scaling worldwide, 2Y3X. And... and the first thing that we do is just say, listen, what do you really want to do? What's the thing that makes your, your eyes light up or your brain crackle or, you know, your heart warm when you think about that kind of work? Then do that because life's too short to do crap for people who just want to hand you money. Yeah, no, it's such, such a powerful message and one that um, we share all the time with our clients. I'm a very big believer that, that we did the study that we did most recently, Felix, was it said essentially the same thing. Most most consulting firms uh, can manage between eight to twenty clients maximum. It's, it's not much. It's not hundreds, mm. right? Yeah. And so really narrowing in, so so powerful. So. You